सो गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल आई होप आई एम ऑडिबल एंड विजिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू जस्ट गिव मी अ सेकेंड लेट मी चेक इफ माई ऑडियो वीडियो इज फाइन सो वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू इन दिस डर्मेटोलॉजी सेशन विद मी डॉक्टर चेष्टा अग्रवाल यूर नीट पी जी एजुकेटर ऑन द बेस्ट ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म दैट इज एन अकेडमी येस अमेजिंग सो वी आर ऑन बाइन ऑलरेडी now i request all my students anybody who is interested right now in taking the an academy subscription we are giving you 20% discount on all the an academy subscription if you use the code cheshta10 so kindly use this code and go ahead with this we are having a lot of new batches in this month that is a neat pg batch we are having one batch uh, that is uh, on july 1 which is a tnd batch for the repeaters it has two modules that we have a tnd uh, which will go till october which is of 250 hours and uh, we have a module for high yield theory which will go from december november 180 hours so requesting each and every one of you to kindly go ahead we are also expecting a increase in the price hike so i would be highly requesting all my students to get this code cheshta10 and get your an academy subscription today so kindly use this code and get your an academy subscription today so let us start with the today's question and today i'll be discussing the lot of questions from the geno dermatosis topic the first question is on your computer screen everyone anyone can tell me the answer here Daria sign is characterized by all except Daria sign copron grain is positive lesions predominantly present over the seboric areas and nail shows longitudinal alternate band with v shaped notching which of the following is the correct answer here Now please remember Daria's disease is nothing but a type of congenital acantholytic disorder it is a congenital acantholytic disorder okay what is this it is a congenital acantholytic disorder so this is something which is very very important it is a congenital acantholytic disorder second very important point is this is also known as keratosis follicularis now what do you mean by congenital acantholytic disorder so here you are a gene atp2a2 which is deficient which is reduced atp2a2 is reduced and when the atp2a2 is reduced the calcium channels which is required for the proper functioning of desmoglein 3 is also reduced so in a way what is happening in a way there is affection of desmoglein 3 which is very similar to that of pemphigus and that is why these individuals will have supra basal cleft giving rise to acantholysis now the options which is not correct the nail shows longitudinal alternate band this is true the lesions are predominantly on the seboric area again true and when you do a histopath you will see some degenerated cells which are known as cork rod and grain that is also true which is incorrect it is the option number 1 that is daria sign is not a feature of daria's disease it is a feature of cutaneous mastocytosis it's a feature of cutaneous mastocytosis clear that is urticaria pigmentosa so the correct answer the daria disease is characterized by all except the answer is option number 1 now whatever we have discussed the congenital acantholytic disorder with atp2 a2 gene defect we have a very a characteristic follicular keratotic lesions over the seboric distribution giving a very dirty greasy appearance the soft the mucosal lesions are <coughs> cobblestoning then we have the triangular nicks on the uh, free edges of the nail i hope you can appreciate that let me just zoom this for you if you appreciate these triangular nick which is also very common in these individuals histopath shows presence of cork rod and grains again very important feature and if you see if you notice here this is the dermoepidermal junction and you can easily notice that at the dermoepidermal junction there is at dermoepidermal junction we have a supra basal cleft so i think these uh, features are clear now let's move to the next question
identify the skin condition shown in the image psoriasis seborrheic dermatitis pityriasis rosea or ichthyosis vulgaris identify the skin condition shown in the image so it's a very classical image of a dry scaly skin or fishy skin fishy appearance okay so that is fish like scales the answer identify the skin condition shown in the image the answer is ichthyosis vulgaris please remember the answer is ichthyosis vulgaris we have two type of ichthyosiform disorders autosomal dominant type and x-link recessive type autosomal dominant will have features something like this they are light color scales which is present all over the body except flexures we have light color scales all over the body except the flexures while in x-link we have dark color scales all over the body we have dark color scales all over the body so please remember these are the two clinical difference the other features is you have presence of atopic dermatitis then we have cryptorchidism and corneal opacity we have hypogranulosis and we have hypergranulosis so both these features they are very very important ichthyosiform disorders ichthyosiform disorders now please answer this question all of the following are the features of ichthyosis vulgaris except all of the following are the features of ichthyosis vulgaris except autosomal dominant flagrant protein is targeted absent granular layer or flexures always involved all of the following are the features of ichthyosis vulgaris except i hope i my audio video is fine it's working fine am i audible and visible to all of you am i audible and visible to all my dear students okay so the correct answer of this question is option number 4 the correct answer of this question is option number 4 that is flexure are always involved now what happens in ichthyosis vulgaris there is sparing of flexures in ichthyosis vulgaris there is sparing of flexures so the correct answer of this question is option number 4 autosomal dominant yes this is true flagrant is targeted this is true and absent granular layer again that is true so you can just follow this table and you can easily answer the question given clear next question is on a computer screen the there is little error in the connections here in rajasthan so uh, i'm very sorry that if you are not if i'm not able to if the video is not going smooth i'm very very sorry for that what is the next question a male child with cryptorchidism presents with large dirty brown scales skin biopsy shows hypergranulosis and steroid sulfatase deficiency what is the probable diagnosis anyone please look at this steroid sulfatase deficiency then we have large scales steroid sulfatase deficiency everything cryptorchidism all this points towards the diagnosis of x linked ichthyosis so like that you will get questions in your exams from this particular topic now moving to the next one a neonate with the following condition what is the incorrect statement regarding the associated disease please solve this x linked recessive may progress to lamellar ichthyosis may progresses and peel offs within 4 week of life very nice sharmila dr p arzu a neonate with the following condition what is the incorrect statement 
regarding the associated disease now i request all my students to kindly do the topic like genodermatosis cutaneous malignancies nutritional deficiencies little more in detail because i have seen a lot of question being asked from this particular topic and these topics are something which is not usually covered okay so try to remember all these points or features which is very very important a neonate present with the following condition what is the incorrect statement regarding the associated disease very nice arzu sharmila dr p amazing all of you very well done so the neonate with the following condition the incorrect statement is option number 1 first of all look at this image what is happening in this baby if you notice that there is a very shiny glistening membrane which covers the skin of this baby this is a colloidal membrane this is the colloidal membrane which is a thin glistening membrane which covers the surface of the baby you usually see colloidal membrane associated with lamellar ichthyosis and one of its variant which is known as bathing suit ichthyosis in both of them transglutaminase is affected in bathing suit ichthyosis we have a temperature sensitive transglutaminase this membrane peels off after 4 weeks of life and the mode of inheritance is autosomal recessive so the incorrect statement is option number 1 which says that it is an x linked recessive condition because of tight uh, you know attachment you see ectropion eclabion saucer shaped fingers membrane desiccations around the fingers and sometimes the complications like hype Uh, you know, problem in hydration, hypothermia, and secondary infections. After the colloidal membrane peels off, the underlying baby will have an appearance like this in lamellar ichthyosis. You have broad plate-like scales, which is known as lamellar ichthyosis. Broad plate-like scales. Next question: Identify the skin condition shown in this photograph. identify the skin condition shown in this photograph very nice if you look at this baby this is a baby with very thick scales which actually deforms the baby shape the features and please remember this is an armor like or harlequin ichthyosis armor like harlequin ichthyosis like an armor like previously we used to go for wars and we used to wear something on the body that is like armor the next question is on your computer screen please tell me the please tell me the answer which of the following is not seen in petriasis rubra pilaris which of the following is not seen in petriasis rubra pilaris that with a very characteristic presentation In petriasis rubra pilaris patients we have a defect in card 14 gene we have a defect in card 14 gene so what happens because of this card 14 gene defect patient develops follicular papules which are initially very discrete can you see here red color follicular prominences which are initially very discrete but later on they combine to form a large areas of involvement this is known as prp lakes and few sparings in between which is known as island of sparing 
you can see that there are few sparings in between this is known as island of sparing now because of this follicular lesions you have a very characteristic nutmeg greater appearance nutmeg is what when you just uh, you know uh, it is called as kaddu kas in hindi you must have made uh, some some gratings of the vegetables and all so you have an instrument for that so because that pointed appearance of the skin the consistency resembles that of nutmeg grater in these so uh, patients you have a very characteristic palmo plantar uh, lesion that is yellowish discoloration this is known as palmo plantar keratoderma so which of the following is not seen salmon colored scaly plaque yes island of sparing yes nutmeg grater yes but what about herald patch please remember herald patch is a feature of petriasis rosea not petriasis rubra pilaris it is a feature of petriasis rosea next question griffith classification is used for griffith classification is used for griffith classification is used for anyone yes again the answer remains the same it is the classification system which is used to classify the different type of petriasis rubra pilaris we have a classical type where the progression of the disease is from the cephalo caudal cephalo caudal arrangement from the cephalic to caudal atypical is something other than cephalo caudal then we have classical juvenile classical circumscribed and classical atypical these are the three for the children and one is hiv associated so these are the different classification system and on doing a histopath you will see a very characteristic checkerboard pattern what is checkerboard pattern there is alteration in the parakeratosis and orthokeratosis so checkerboard pattern is very characteristic now coming to the questions from genogametosis button hole sign can be seen in questions on genogametosis button hole sign can be seen in button hole sign can be seen in discoid lupus erythematosus von recklinghausen's disease tuberous sclerosis or ataxia telin jactasia very nice sachin arzu sharmila the answer is von recklinghausen's disease and you all are right absolutely because von recklinghausen's disease is another name for neurofibromatosis type 1 now little bit about neurofibromatosis we have total eight types and they are classified according to riccardi's classification we have total eight types of neurofibromatosis 1 2 von recklinghausen's acoustic mixed variant segmental then late onset nf not otherwise specified we have four types neurofibromas the cutaneous lesions axillary freckling caffeolar macule iris lesion nodules and there are some of the internal features also like sphenoid bone dysplasias you can have optic gliomas so these are some of the internal features which you see in these patients for keeping it under the diagnostic criteria you should have at least six or more caffeolar macules which is of more than 5 mm in prepubertal and more than 15 mm in adult neurofibromas should be more than 2 or equals to 2 then you have axillary freckling optic gliomas leash nodule is again more than equals to 2 so these are some of the features now what is cafe ole macule calm tuberous sclerosis bloom syndrome coden macule albright or normal individual is 10 to 20% what is the correct answer anyone
now the next question is so cafe ole macule is not something which is only specific to neurofibromatosis you see cafe ole macules in a lot other conditions also moving to the next question moving to the next question the ocular condition shown in the image below is associated with ocular condition shown in the image below is associated with xeroderma pigmentosa incontinentia pigmentae neurofibromatosis or ichthyosis the ocular condition shown in the image below is associated with and i think you remember this image we have discussed it just now what is this image this is an image of incontinentia pigmentae sorry this is an image of iris leach nodule in a patient of neurofibromatosis type 1 so the answer is option number 1 clear can you answer the next question the slit uh, the patient has seven irregular hyperpigmented macules on the trunk multiple small macules in the axilla groin since early childhood there were no other skin lesions which is the most likely investigation to support this diagnosis <clears throat> and you have to tell me why you are giving that answer whatever you are marking tell me what is the correct answer patient had seven irregular hyperpigmented macules on trunk multiple small macules in the axilla and groin since early childhood there were no other skin lesions which is the most likely investigation to support the diagnosis sachin nkn weber arzu this is a patient with neurofibromatosis i think this is something which is very easy and clear for you to understand this is neurofibromatosis type 1 what are these irregular hyperpigmented macules on the trunk these are cafe ole macules this one in the axilla is the axillary frackling the other thing which you will see in this patient is you will do a slit lamp examination to look for iris leach nodules this will actually help or support the diagnosis leach nodules are seen in von becklinghausen's disease lupus vulgaris leprosy or lymphogranuloma venereum it's like a revision for you all it is a feature of neurofibromatosis type 1 which is also known as von recklinghausen's disease type 1 neurofibromatosis is also known as von recklinghausen's disease pathognomic sign of neurofibromatosis is anyone what is the pathognomic sign of neurofibromatosis what is the pathognomic sign of neurofibromatosis cafe ole macule axillary frackling chagrin patch none of the above now there are many students who think that the cafe ole macule is a pathognomic sign but if you remember few minutes back i have shown you a table which says that cafe ole macule can be seen in normal individual can be seen in neurofibromatosis tuberous sclerosis macule albright and so on so if a symptom is seen or if a sign is seen in so many condition it cannot be pathognomic to one disease so that is why the answer here the best possible answer here is option number 2 axillary frackling which is also known as crow sign c r o w e crow sign is a very characteristic or pathognomic it's a very characteristic or pathognomic of neurofibromatosis type 1 okay neurofibromatosis type 1 which among the following is false regarding the neurofibromatosis which is false regarding the neurofibromatosis cafe ole macule autosomal recessive condition axillary frackling is pathognomic and leach nodule which among the following is false
which among the following is false uh, yes uh, you are right uh, the axillary fracling is now no more called as axillary fracling because it is not only limited to axilla you can see the same thing in groin you can see the same thing in between the intermammary areas and that is why we are now using crow's sign as a better word now because this type of hyperpigmented fracas or this type of hyperpigmented macules are not only limited to the axilla is that clear so it is not only the axillary fracling it can be seen in the groin it can be seen in the intermammary areas also if that is clear please give me a quick thumbs up can can and yes you are right it is an autosomal dominant condition so the incorrect statement becomes option number 2 it is an autosomal dominant condition so the answer is option number 2 in which hematopoietic syndrome a 4 year old male with a history of seizure on examination there is a hypopigmented patch on the face mental retardation the most probable diagnosis is most probable diagnosis is neurofibromatosis tuberous sclerosis xanthomatosis and incontinentia pigmenta a 4 year old male with a history of seizure on examination there is hypopigmented patches on the face mental retardation the most probable diagnosis is ashima sachin arzu weber A four-year-old male with a history of seizures on examination. There is hypopigmented patches on face and mental retardation. The correct answer of this question is option number two. What are these hypopigmented patches which you see? These are ash, leaf, spot, then mental retardation. history of seizures we have a very characteristic vogert's triad right epiloia epilepsy loss of intelligence and adenoma sebaceum epilepsy loss of intelligence and adenoma sebaceum epilepsy loss of intelligence and adenoma sebaceum all are true regarding tuberous sclerosis except what is the answer all are true regarding tuberous sclerosis except autosomal dominant vogue's triad of epiloia cafe ole excludes the diagnosis fibrous plaque or stippled confetti spot this is something which is very interesting and this is what i find very interesting about tuberous sclerosis because you know students only know four features that okay yes tuberous sclerosis so sha green patch uh, okay the nedinoma sebaceum conan's tumor uh, you know and few few rare more features that's it but there are many more features which is seen and again i can see lot of you with incorrect statement what did i tell you few minutes back that cafe ole macule is not specific to any of them neither to nf neither to tuberous sclerosis so how can presence of cafe ole excludes the diagnosis but what are the other features so please remember we have a long list of manifestations or features in a patient of tuberous sclerosis we have a long list major features minor features we have a long list of the features hypomelanotic macule should be more than 3 at least 5 mm this is about the ash leaf spot what are these angiofibromas these are nothing but adenoma sebaceum 
angle fibromas which should be more than equals to 2 what are these these are conan's tumor they should be more than equals to 2 for keeping it under the diagnostic criteria chagrin patch multiple renal hematomas cortical dysplasias subabdominal nodules astrocytomas rhabdomyomas lymphangioleomyomatosis and angiomyolipomas these are the major criteria minor criteria is confetti skin lesions patches renal cyst and non renal hematomas so please remember the correct answer of this question is or the the correct answer which you have to mark for this question is option number 3 because fibrous plaque confetti spots vogel's triad autosomal dominant condition they are all the features of tuberous sclerosis they are all the features of tuberous sclerosis i hope this is clear ashima arzu sachin weber is that clear to everyone amazing now let's discuss some of the other questions so uh, the few topics which are not important i'm not covering that yes this is another very important question and i hope you can see all the images and the question is very clear Anyone can tell me the correct answer here. A 45-year-old man presented to the dermatology outpatient department with complaints of excessively thickened skin of palm and sole. He gave a history of similar features in one of his children. On examination, the nails were dystrophic in both the hands and feet, with thin, sparse scalp hair, and no hypohidrosis. what can be the diagnosis here what can be the diagnosis here anyone what can be the diagnosis here so we have a 45 year old man who presented to the dermatology outpatient department with complaints of excessively thickened skin of palm and sole he gave a history of similar features in one of his children on examination the nails were dystrophic in both the hands and feet with thin sparse scalp hair and no hypohidrosis what is the answer christ cement torrens syndrome clauston syndrome eec syndrome or down syndrome what is the correct answer anyone anybody that can tell me the correct answer for this very nice please remember this is a question from what this is a question from a very classical disorders which is known as ectodermal dysplasias now what is these ectodermal dysplasias whenever you have defect in the ectodermally derived tissues like hair teeth skin so whenever you have defect in the ectodermally derived tissues what happens the disorder or the syndrome which they form is known as ectodermal dysplasias now if you look at this question the question clearly says that there is problem in the skin the problem in the hair thin and sparse hair as well as in the nail the next thing which you have to see in this patient is involvement of the sweat glands if the sweat glands are normal you will classify them into clauston and if the sweat glands are abnormal you will classify them in christ cement torrent here there is no hypohidrosis means sweat glands are absolutely normal and that is why we are keeping them under clauston syndrome which is also known as hydrotic ectodermal dysplasias while christ cement torrin is also known as anhydrotic because the sweat gland is reduced or affected anhydrotic ectodermal dysplasia so just remember these names because i have seen questions being asked from this particular topic okay of ectodermal dysplasias of ectodermal dysplasias now the next question is on your computer screen defective dna repair defective dna repair is associated with defective dna repair is associated with what is the answer here anybody defective dna repair is associated with 
एल्बेनिज्म जीरो डर्मा पिगमेंटोसा विटिलिगो और एक थायोसिस एनी करेक्ट आंसर डिफेक्टिव डीएनए रिपेयर इज एसोसिएटेड वेरी नाइस आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी इजी दी डिफेक्टिव डीएनए रिपेयर इज एसोसिएटेड विद अ वेरी करेक्टरिस्टिक एग्जांपल ऑफ जीरो डर्मा पिगमेंटोसा कैन यू टेल मी द अदर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ डिफेक्टिव डीएनए रिपेयर अदर देन जीरो डर्मा पिगमेंटोसा इट इज ब्लूम सिंड्रोम कोकेन सिंड्रोम ब्लूम सिंड्रोम कोकेन सिंड्रोम व्हाट एल्स ब्लूम कोकेन थर्ड एटेक्सिया टीलेंजेक्टेसिया Ataxia tail injectasia. What else? Number four. Last one. Trichothiodystrophy. Trichothiodystrophy. So these are the DNA defect disorders. So we have given a whole list of the. The next question is on your computer screen. Please tell me what is the correct answer for this question. anyone can tell me the answer please read uh, read this question very very carefully cell culture from the patient with this disorder exhibit low activity of nucleotide excision repair so this is a dna defect disorder dna repair defect disorders it is an autosomal recessive condition with marked sensitivity to sun and there is a risk of development of multiple skin cancers so this is a example of zero derma pigmentosa that is how zero derma pigmentosa look like there are a lot of freckles on the face you have scarring which is seen they are increased at the risk of cancer and please remember they can even give rise to but they can have premature death they can have premature death next question is on your computer screen i hope this is clear to all of you the next question I hope this is clear. Geno dermatoid disease that causes skin cancers. Very nice. The answer is again the same. Now there are many students who think that, man, why not actinic keratosis? Actinic keratosis is also a, uh, what should I say? It is also a condition where you have predisposition to squamous cell carcinoma. Then why we are not marking option number C as the answer? because the question clearly mentions genodermatosis please remember actinic keratosis is not a genodermatomal disease it is a disease which occurs because of the prolonged sun exposure it is something related to the prolonged sun exposure and then it is leading to the malignancy while genodermat uh, xeroderma pigmentosa is something which occurs because of gene defect okay so that is the difference why option number 3 is not the answer here there are other syndromes like bloom syndrome very similar to zero derma pigmentosa but please remember there is no freckling here second cocaine syndrome again there is photosensitivity like zero derma pigmentosa but no freckling they have a very characteristic faces can you see with a very big ears and that is why it is known as mickey mouse faces they also give you an appearance of a old man so premature senile appearance so these are the images of a patient of bloom syndrome and cocaine syndrome moving to the next question moving to the next question what is the correct answer the images show certain changes in the conjunctiva 
found in DNA repair defect. What is the first clinical manifestation of this disease? What is the first clinical manifestation of this disease? Very nice. So, this is something which is clear. If you look at this image, one thing which is clear is there are some telangiectasias in the sclera. Scleral telangiectasia is one of the very important feature of ataxia telangiectasia. But if they ask about the first feature, it is always progressive cerebellar degeneration which will give rise to ataxia. Okay. So, this is a DNA repair defect. This is given in the question itself. This is a DNA repair defect. But what is the first clinical manifestation? It is progressive cerebellar degenerations. You can see ocular and mucocutaneous telangiectasias. Again, senile look can be seen because of loss of subcutaneous fat and premature grain. You have immunodeficiency and there is an increased risk of leukemias and lymphomas in these patients. So, these are the features of ataxia telangiectasias. The next question is on your computer screen. and visible to all of you there is some connections error which i am seeing today so let's let's go ahead please remember what is the correct answer of this question the answer is option number four that is incontinentia pigment type can you all give me a thumbs up if my audio video is fine everyone now what is incontinentia pigment type it is also known as blotch schulzberger syndrome it is also known as blotch schulzberger syndrome here you have mode of inheritance that is x linked dominant And you have Nemo gene defect. And you have Nemo gene defect. Okay. So you have X link dominant inheritance and you have a Nemo gene defect. Now, what is a very classical sequence of lesions here? Patient will have vesicles first. Then they will go to a very classical verruca stage. Then they will go to the hyper pigmented stage followed by hypopigmented stage so vesicular verrucous hyperpigmented and hypopigmented so that is the sequence vesicular verrucous hyperpigmented and hypopigmented stage so these are very important now always remember that a patient follows this sequence it means that if you see a baby at this stage it doesn't mean that the baby have started with the lesions of this stage only it means that baby have already finished the vesicular stage and verruca stage sometimes these stages they completes within the uterus only intrauterine only so try to remember that these sequence always follows now in this question they have given you that mother reports a history of in utero child death is there any significance of this history anything which you can tell me what is the significance of this in utero child death please remember please remember this is an autosomal dominant condition this is an autosomal dominant condition sorry this is an excellent dominant condition which is lethal for the male child it is an excellent dominant condition which is lethal for the male child lethal for the male child it's an excellent dominant disorder which is lethal for the male child so that is something which you need to know it is lethal for the male child only the female child survives because it is excellent dominant condition i hope this point is clear to all of you and this images are also clear there are few other symptoms or there are few other extra cutaneous manifestations like dental defect of delayed dentition, conical teeth, missing teeth. Then we have ocular defects of blindness, strabismus, blue sclera, nystagmus. Central nervous system defects of mental retardation and skeletal abnormalities of skull, short stature and cleft lip or cleft palate. Is that clear to all of you? So these are some of the extra cutaneous manifestations which you see. Dental defect, ocular defect, CNS involvement and skeletal abnormality. 
Now the next question is on your computer screen. A two month old girl with a verrucous plaque on the trunk. What is the most probable diagnosis? What is the answer? A two month old girl presented with verrucous plaque on the trunk. What is the most probable diagnosis here for this patient? Very nice. Again, the lesion or the history is very similar or matching with that of incontinential pigment. The next question, the mode of inheritance of incontinential pigment. <coughs> Again, you all know it is X-linked dominant. So all these questions, they are interlinked with each other. All these questions are interlinked with each other. Now we have few more questions. I want all my students to answer this question. A young boy presented to dermatology OPD with multiple shiny pinhead size papules on the dorsum of hand, forearm, penis. What would be the diagnosis? What would be your diagnosis? Lichen planus, lichen nitidus, lichen aureus, lichen planus, hypertrophicus, etc. Sumit, Ashima, Weber, RR, NS, KN. Anybody can tell me the correct answer. This is a recent question of I think FMG paper. The small shiny pinhead papules on the hand forearm penis is nothing but lichen nitidus. Nothing but lichen nitidus. The correct answer is option number 2. Next question is on your computer screen. Tell me the answer of the next question. What is the correct answer of the next question given? Child was recently put on a solid diet after being breastfed since birth. He now presents with perioral vesicular plaque, sparing the upper lip and there is diarrhea. Which of the following would be deficient in this particular patient's condition? Am I audible and visible now? So I think uh, yes, I think now I am audible and visible. So we will just finish up with this question and uh, I think we will not continue on it because there is some of the a lot of internet issues going on. So the answer to this question is actually option number one that is shingles. You have a patient with vesicular lesion on the one side of the face which is very very painful. So this is a very classical description of herpes zoster. A very very classical description of herpes zoster. Last 5 minutes left. So if uh, we can cover up with these stuff, it would be easy for me to finish up all the topics. 5 minutes left. A 47 year old man with a history of recent subclinical hepatitis C infection presents complaining of a rash mouth pain for past week. The rash is pruritic. So we have hepatitis C infection with the rash on the skin and mouth infection. You can see that the rest is on the wrist, ankle, scalp. The lesions are sh shiny, violaceous, sharply demarcated, confluent papule with a white lacy pattern. Examination of his oral cavity reveals an erosion on the left buccal mucosa with same fire, fine white reticulation. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? The correct answer of this question is lichen planus. The correct answer of this question is lichen planus. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Option number 1, lichen planus. Good. 35 year old patient comes with clin uh, come to the clinic because he was having a worsening rash. He has had a rash in the past on his elbow, knee, but after finishing a steroid pill for his asthma, his rash suddenly got worsened. Again, very interesting question. 
He also has fever and chills and on examination we can see that erythema involves more than 90% of the body surface area and there are small pustules on the top of the erythema on his trunk. What is the diagnosis? Erythema, uh, erythrodermic psoriasis, acute generalized pustular psoriasis, uh, then impetigo or petiformis or atopic dermatitis. Please remember the correct answer here is option number one. Erythrodermic psoriasis. Because there was some lesion in the patient in the past and now on withdrawing the steroids, the lesion got exacerbated. On withdrawing the steroids, the lesion got exacerbated. So that was a very typical history. Next question. A six-year-old patient with lesion on his toe that had doubled in size in past year. It is non-tender and does not bleed, but his wife says that it is getting bigger and darker on the side. The macula is 7 mm in diameter, which of the following is diagnostic? Very nice all of you. So please remember this is a patient with a very classical malignant melanoma. You can see that there is variegate plaque, dark at one area, lighter at one area. So that is variegation in the plaque. And in addition to variegation, you can see that there is a sudden evolution of the lesion that is something which is creating problem. Sudden evolution of the lesion which is creating the problem in our patient. So please remember with this we are done with the today's session. I hope you have enjoyed. There was a lot of interruptions in between because of the connection, but I am very happy that everybody have listened to us. Mm -hmm. Now I am requesting all of you to please go ahead and get the 20% discount off on an academy subscription which is currently going on, a very important offer. Don't forget to use my code CHESTA to get your subscription today. Thank you.